more blue lock drama that's right whenever an enemy does good we glaze an enemy does bad we farm the drama i come out on top at the expense of nobody really they completely missed the point of blue lock season two incoming stupid kids saying you should be grateful it's even being animated. I think that the fucking frames are so good. Stupid delusional kids, shut the fuck up. Lulok has always had a special place in my heart. It was the first video that was truly an overnight success on my channel and made me believe I could make YouTube videos for a living. If it weren't- Must be fucking nice. I still, I'm still working for one of those overnight success. If it weren't for my Lulok video doing well, I don't think I'd be standing here in front of you anymore. Lulok even inspired one of my favorite videos I've ever made. The World Cup video. No okay. matter how I look at it, Blue Lock has been the most influential anime in my life, and I cherish it very dearly. It's like a son to me. <laughs> so imagine giving birth to a son that looks like this. What a fucking disappointment. Now you are a disappointed Asian father. Ah, oh, hell no. Nah. The ball's moving. The ball's Whenever being dragged, I find actually. Something that makes me lose all hope in anime. I find a palate cleanser. Something to remind me that good media still exists. Thankfully, today's sponsor, Web Novel, has got me covered. The first legendary Beastmaster is my. And back to the regular content. Use discount code Karu for your first. I don't fucking know. Readers and is a platform dedicated to fantasy novels. Even having comics for those videos. Yeah. Horrified PowerPoint disguised as an anime. And from what I showed you just now. There is some merit to that statement. I'm not gonna sit here and defend Blue Lock just because it's special to me, okay? I'm biased. I am not blind. Blue Lock Season 2, so- If anything, you should be even more upset. If you're truly a fan of Blue Lock, if you say that you enjoy Blue Lock, there is no way you're gonna defend Season 2. It is a fucking tragedy. You should be the most upset. Far as a poorly made product coming from the most popular sports manga ever in recent times. It's lazy, it's low effort most of the time, and there's no excuse I can come up with to justify why it looks that way. So let's take a few minutes to witness just how bad the animation really is. Season 2 starts off with Rin 1v1 against his brother Sai. And I think I'm the only person in the world who has a problem with this opening scene. So Why? Sai is claiming that his little brother hasn't improved since he came back from Real Madrid or, you know, whatever, some bullshit like that. That's yeah. not what I'm focusing on. He's like in Spain? What I want to know is if you noticed how many cuts were made while I was talking. This clip of Sai dribbling past his brother is unedited, straight from the episode. Did you count how many cuts there were? Don't Maybe like 14. Don't worry, I did it for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, oh. 14, 15, ah. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That was way off. Jesus Christ. And why do they do these cuts? It's a very uh, strategic way to make it look like things are moving even though they're not. By having small movements, like, like just genuinely, just go back and look at the different cuts, right? Like, how much movement is happening before each cut? Little to none. But you can create the illusion that shit is moving if you keep doing these cuts. It's, it's, a, it's a, another one of those tactics, right? Where it makes it look like things are alive. Another thing is you see quite often in Blue Lock is like these like impact lines just happening, going vertical lines, white and black, you know, happening on the borders to make the scene more dynamic, yet nothing is happening. It's a still frame with those fucking bars moving around with the camera going all over the place to give the illusion that things are moving. 1920. This dribbling scene was 25 seconds long. Garbage. 20 cuts made in the span of 25 seconds? What is this, a Western action movie? <laughs> Yeah, but at the very least, shit's actually moving there. And, well, you know, movies, <laughs> it's gonna move. Like, you drop a gun, it's gonna fucking drop down, right? It, but the soccer ball, it looks like it's just, like, you know, being dragged around. What's worse is, some of the clips aren't even the move. It's fucking B-roll. Why is there B-roll in the first scene of the first episode? To pad more watch time, right? Their goal is, how do we give the illusion to make it look like there's a lot of substance without having any substance? It's a fucking hot air balloon. It's all just min-maxed 
episode of a highly successful series. Are we out of budget already? A lot of anime tend they to are. put the most effort into their first episode because that's the first thing you see. They want to leave a good impression. So that's right. That and the trailer as well, right? And I bring that up because we recently had a U20 trailer. You're supposed to give the best moments to catfish the audience, to give them, you know, some cope and hope and say, you know what? The trailer looks good. The opening looks good. Maybe I'll give it a try. The trailer was even trash. So that you watch the next episode. Blue Lock seems to be doing the exact opposite. They seem to be making a bad impression, hoping we wouldn't expect anything from them. At least, that's what the internet wants to believe. I keep seeing comments from people. Oh being boy. Like, well, the reason the starting episodes are. No, 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 that's fine, right? Having this kind of cope is not a wrong thing. To immediately just, you know, um, give up on something and say it's over is also fucking stupid. That's a loser's mindset. To actually hope for something better, there's nothing wrong with that, but you have to be realistic. And I always say, I always say, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. They're bad is probably because they're saving it for the U20 match. You never know. Fucker, I'll be long gone before the U20 match if this is what I'm getting. That's also true, right? Even if they, let's say there is a situation where they save the budget for the U20 match, which is seemingly very unlikely based on the trailer we watched. The next level cope right now is the last five minutes of U20 match. That's where all the budget's going to go. We're doing fucking copeception right now, but the common audience is going to have dropped the show already. They're not going to be watching. If you think that you can backload your content and hope that the audience will stick around, most of them will be gone. You don't voluntarily eat garbage for six weeks hoping the next week is going to be a burger. That's called being insane. Doing the same thing over and over yep. again, expecting a different result. And to prove this isn't a skill issue, let's look at the first season for comparison. How did... Um... Well, we already know what's happening, right? Just, just look at 2022 versus 2024 8-Bit Studios, which is a studio doing this shit. They only had two projects in 2022, right? The overall scheduling and the resources they could allocate to Blue Lock Season 1 was very good. But look at now. There's so many different projects. Tensura was also mismanaged. Mahoka Season 3 was just dog shit. And there's Blue Lock and there's a bunch of other minor projects as well going on. They took on so much because Bandai Namco and 8-Bit Studios and the decision makers who were on the production committee decided to let's just uh, try to, you know, squeeze as much out of this fucking thing as possible. They're literally squeezing like you're trying to milk a fucking rock right now. There's nothing left, right? And it's just corporate greed getting in the way of art. How did they start? Isagi in a heated match in the dying minutes of the game. By the way, already more movement in five yep. seconds than any of season. Totally different anime, right? S at legs are actually moving. You can see the whole body. Balls are moving. It's totally different. Two, one goal to win the game. Isagi dribbles past countless defenders. Look at that man. Passes to Actual team. foot team movement. Shoots, hits the post. They counter. Kira takes the ball down first touch. <laughs> I remember this guy. This guy was so hyped up that he was immediately trashed. Drives in, scores. I don't know about you, yeah. but I think this sequence of plays is much, much yes. harder to animate than two guys playing 1v1. Absolutely. But I don't see any B-roll being used here. I don't see them panning to the audience. Yeah, because they had more resources in 2022. They actually had proper scheduling and resources to put out a good piece of work. Audience panning to the sky showing us how detailed the Gatorades the players are drinking? No, they gave us a minute's worth of actual football that we can't even get 25 seconds into season two. You can't even argue that size dribbling was difficult to animate because if you say that, anything that Bachira did in season one shouldn't exist. Bachira mm -hmm. was doing roulettes, rainbow flicks, and nutmegs back to back in the yep. first season. And oddly enough, we barely got to see Bachira do anything during uh, the tryouts to make it into the Blue Lock 11. I was really curious on like how much are they going to animate Bachira's movement because whenever he's on the field and he has the ball, it's so much movement. They low-key off-screened it. I don't really remember Bachira really playing. And the craziest thing is he was supposed to be in there twice because he was the exception compared to everyone else trying out for the teams because he was that good. Now, maybe the source material, the manga, also didn't, you know, have Bachira's highlight there. But they can't animate Sai doing just one of those things? There's no excuse. The only reason I will accept is complete negligence. They either did not care at all. No, no, no. Well, they care about money. This isn't negligence. This is very intentional. What they're doing is extremely, extremely intentional. It's basically 
maybe it's not the same, but this kind of feels like a, a common phenomenon that happens when you go shopping and let's say you see a bag of potato chips that five years ago, it was pretty fucking good. There's a lot of it, but now it's like the same price, yet there's less of it. It's called shrinkflation, meaning they're trying to take away right the product they're trying to just try to give the illusion that there's there's the same or more but providing less right so 2024 just look at the lineup of the things that 8-bit studios has taken on it's completely mismanaged corporate greed is getting the way and it is very intentional what they're trying to do just genuinely trying to give the least amount of effort to have a quote unquote presentable product, which obviously everyone is dunking on, but this is not negligence. This is not random. It's very intentional. All about making a good product because they knew we would eat it up, or they had a super corrupt person who mismanaged resources. Absolutely. It could be both. I, I don't think that um two uh, this is a mutually exclusive thing, right? Two things can be true as in they are banking on the fact that the blue lock title the name the franchise will carry the show and they're also going to give the least amount of effort to put into this shit right i think it's both at the same time versus and took all the money i refuse to believe they couldn't make this scene look any better than it is now and they're lucky episode one was an intro because they got away with animating people yeah because you know episode one was fucking no actual soccer movement even the most recent episode if you discount the fight scenes right it's all just talking and yapping but because the story is so compelling and because the art looks good you're led to believe that oh shit this is a pretty decent anime turns out the moment that people start moving you start fucking laughing you can't even take it seriously well just standing around for 20 minutes episode two however oh. is a whole nother story <sighs> garbage you know i wrote in my notes after watching this episode at minute 829, I commented, it's like I'm watching those highly edited manga videos. It's impressive <laughs> on YouTube because it's- Hey, true. Very true. This shit's an AMV. It's usually one guy and they're uploading it basically for free with ads, if they even get any. But it's different when it's an entire company. The fan animation is so much better. Shoutouts to Not L, bro. And this is like a, I think this is a high school kid. He's like 16 year old or something, or maybe he's like a college kid, but he's like a really young kid just doing this shit. It looks so much better than what's actually happening in Blue Lock right now. ...with a full team of animators. So what am I talking about? Let's look at these highly edited manga panels. <laughs> Drag. Zoom. See, that's what I'm talking about, right? These fucking speed lines, these impact lines to make the illusion that things are fucking moving with a little bit of hair flicker. See, and then the aura, right? You have highly contrasted colors, right? The art looks stunning. If you just look at this frame, it looks good. But when it starts moving, it's like, what's actually happening? Nothing. The voice acting is phenomenal though, of course. I'm sorry to be that guy, but you're literally just adding a wave effect on a still yep. image. You want yep, this is some cap cut shit. Wanna see me do it? Here, let me show you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the lines, the lines, bro. Yeah, color and shit too. Yeah, give the aura, right? Contrast saturated color with some fucking speed lines. Boom. Oh, the puzzles, bro. The puzzles. Oh, ooh. <laughs> yeah, look at the fucking ooh. I mean, I can do that shit too. Bro, look at me. Ooh, ooh. I'm moving around. Wow. Yeah. Yo, this you is know Blue it's Lock, bad man. when the next thing I write is some movement here. I hate that I have to note down every time they actually move. <laughs> to be fair, this short action sequence from Karasu was done really well. Yeah, yeah, the Karasu movement there, there is some very cool scenes here and there. I was genuinely shocked that they gave us- But, 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 I, I, I think that we're shocked. We're being conditioned. Where, because there's lack of movement everywhere else, the moment something is like average or subpar, we're thinking it's peak because we're anchored, right? Our reference point is fucking nothing moving. So suddenly there's some average animation and we start losing our mind. Something to look at other than floating JPEGs, which tells me that they are capable of animating intricate footwork. Yep. They just didn't do it for some. Yep. And if you go watch the video where I covered that post with the outsourced, you know, animator that worked for 8 Studios that fuck this, I'm gone by episode two. They intentionally cut out all the different stuff that the animators did in order to save their resources. 
right? I'm not sure exactly how it's done in the final process, but basically the animators will animate the scenes that they're you know responsible for, and then they give it to whoever is in charge of you know polishing the final package, right? But at that stage, it gets removed because it's too much resources being poured into it, and they're like, nope. We're trying to do this as cheap as possible. Nope, we're gonna cut that shit out. Some reason. I don't know if it's because they're trying to minimize the use of CGI, but at this point, I'd rather have blocky computer-generated figures than whatever this is. It's a lot of movement. <laughs> Chiggity, bro. And the audacity that they had. There's a frame where Chiggity does this, like, super speed thing, but it looks so fucking bad. It's just him being dragged with, the, like, a big smoke behind him. And they included that in the Blue Lock 11 and U20 trailer arcs. Like, because they're proud of it. Like, that's crazy you would include that shit. It's a fucking joke. I love seeing those memes where people try to recreate this yep. exact scene. Because the best part is, it actually looks very close to the original. Mm -hmm. And to really sell you on the terrible animation this episode, at one point, they used a PowerPoint transition. God no way. Damn. No way. They used the trick I did in elementary school, man. Distract the teacher from my shit presentation by putting fancy slides. Episode 3 solidified to me that Blue Lock is actually very well drawn. It is uh -huh. not well animated. Because yep. good animation requires two things. One is that it has to move, and yep. two, it has to move well. Blue Lock. <laughs> That's all I'm asking. Just fucking move. Thank you, Kevin, for that nine months of Prime. I'd appreciate that. But like, well, they do move. All right, they do move. It's just that when they move, they're doing this, right? They're, they're, they're dragging shit around. That's, that's, that's bad movement. Can't even get the first one right, so there's no point in wishing for the second. But the drawings are it looks really so good. fucking good. Yep. If you take a screenshot of Blue Lock characters next to... Just pause any frame when you're watching an episode. It looks stunning. Other anime? You'd think Blue Lock had the animation budget of Disney and Pixar. The lines are solid. The yeah. shading is immaculate. The colors are vibrant. Here's the problem, though. I'm not just here for the drawings. If I wanted to look at good art... We could just watch the fucking... Read the manga! I would have just read the manga. Why do I have to waste 20 minutes staring at still frames? Anime is exponentially harder to make than manga. Because you're not just accounting for good art or good paneling. Sometimes good mangas don't even have good art. But with anime, you have to think about movement. Mmm, yeah, Mob Psycho, right? Or even like One Punch Man. That's not fair, because One Punch Man got redrawn. Yusuke Murata did a redraw of the web to, the web comic into the manga, and then the manga is what's being adapted. But, but One Punch Man, I, uh, sorry, Mob Psycho is a pretty decent example where... The art style is, it's not the best, right? It's, I, I, it's, a, it's an amateur artist that is, you know, you know, creating their own passion project. And it's, it's not bad, but definitely it is not good. But the fact that it moves well in the anime, that's what makes it really good. Mangas don't even have good art. But with anime, you have to think about movement, sound, music, and camera work. Production value. Making it visually appealing. Blue Lock Season 2 is basically a colored version of the manga with extra steps. Yep. If that's what I wanted, I would have got- It's a fucking audiobook, bro. It's, it's, it's a straight up, like, I think I might have a better experience just taking the voiceover acting and laying it over the manga as I'm reading the manga panels. I'm in a box of crayons and colored in the book myself. There's no point in making an anime adaptation if you're just gonna redraw the characters and add chess pieces for movement. Seriously, bro, I have no idea who is who without pausing for several seconds. But why do I care so much about animation? Why? Because we're watching anime, and Blue Lock is a series that he cares about and got an anime adaptation, it should be good. Do I have to dedicate an entire section just to point out how bad it is? Well, firstly, because it's entertaining, so you watch it for longer. But secondly, it directly impacts the weight of the story. I'd argue season two has an objectively more interesting plot than season one. Because yeah. they ramped up the stakes by a lot. Before, it was just... Who could fit into the Japan national team? Now it's we could become the Japan national team because Blue Lock is going to close down if we lose. All mm -hmm. of a sudden, it's no longer one for all, but showing that you can work with the players around you, which in turn allows us to root for more people. Since there's 11 potential players who can start against U20s, Brutal I can root for Evan. Chigiri and Hiyori at the same time. <laughs> I hope Hiyori gets to play as a sub or something, but like, it's crazy that, you know... It is what it is. My two favorite femboys. You know shit's gotten serious Based. when there's multiple colored hair people. Whereas season one, we got ladies man, the traitor, and... God, Kuo sucks so much.
This guy was a joke. This guy, honestly, fuck his backstory. That's right. I hope you're going to suffer in poverty with your 12 other siblings. I don't give a fuck about your backstory either. What a joke of a character he was. Aruhaya, be honest, bro. No one expected these motherfuckers to make it. Come on now. Everything points to season two being better than season one plot wise. So mm. why do the scenes in season one still hit harder? Partly because it moved better because the anime was an actual animation. Because it was a good anime, we left with a better memory of it. But season two, it's a fucking clown fiesta. We're just making jokes. It's just community memes here and there. I can't take it seriously. There's a different sense of entertainment, right? When we're shitting on it. And that's the best part of reaction content, right? Um, most people don't really understand this concept that like bad shows are more fun to watch sometimes than good shows. And mid shows are the worst things to watch for reaction content. Bad shows are better than mid Funnily enough, because when we're reacting and watching it together, we are laughing at it together rather than it being like a solo passive experience where all, you're, you're, you're just mad that it's so fucking garbage. Because I don't know what the fuck is going on half the time in season two. Like constantly using still frames that slide across the screen, it makes it difficult for me to remember where anyone actually is. Sure, Isagi can give me a play-by-play -play dissecting every touch made in the game. Yep. Thanks for the commentary, bro. But that's never gonna replace actually showing us what's happening. Dude, which Yeah, and another crazy thing is how you don't even know how people score sometimes because they don't really animate the kicks either. There was a scene where I think Shiro got like a header as a goal. But because the ball was already in the net, and then the previous frame was the pass being made, we're like, what the fuck just happened? I gotta look at his leg positioning. Did it make sense that he made a kick? I think it was a header. Like, we don't even know. It's actually showing us what's happening. Dude, which fucking lane are you talking about? All I see is your wide ass mouth covering my screen. Also, where did you even come from? Were you at Isa? <laughs> yeah, he did just pop out of nowhere, but I think conceptually, like, there's many different, like, Blue Lock, you know, uh, camps, right? And we were like Team Z, but there's a shitload of other people and Blue Lock Project was huge. Agi's left and you went inside to the right? Or were you there the whole time off screen? Oh, he's talking about the actual fucking movement on the map. Yeah, I have no clue. And you caught up to him. If I have to take more than three seconds to pause and understand where anyone is for every play, you've lost me. The point is... I've given up. I've, I've never once tried to keep track of where everyone is in the map because... Someone's just gonna spawn out of fucking nowhere, right? ...of an anime is to make the manga more easily digestible, and I'm sitting here having to draw maps on everyone's location. And yes, you do have the chess pieces, the chibis, and the isolated scenarios. In that case, just stick to using one. You wanna use this style? Do it. You wanna use this style? Don't. You wanna use this? Whatever. <laughs> Just stick to one because shuffling between them is just gonna confuse me even more. Because I'm here thinking this is a full length football pitch, yet the players are able. Maybe that's their goal, bro, to make you so confused, to make you so discom. What's the word? Discombobulated? That like you can't uh, pay attention to how bad the animation is. To overload you with so much fucking sensory data with different shit fucking happening. And with poor anime, that you forget there's poor animation. Able to run from one side to the next without anyone catching up? Is no one defending? I think the biggest thing, though, is the lack of attention to the goals. Goals are the most important part. They yes. show us how talented these strikers are, and it's a way for them to show off their individual skills. Yes, but these goals are so mid because the ball is already in the fucking net. By the time, like, like, we don't see the kick most of the times. And if we do see the kick... It's just a wonky fucking ball just being dragged around to the net. It, there's like no impact. Skill. Take Nagi, for example. Nagi was introduced to Blue Lock as the lazy genius, the guy who can score goals seemingly out of nothing. And season one showed that beautifully. That match against Team Z established Nagi as one of the top players in Blue Lock. Yep. His movement is fluid. Even for a few seconds, you can tell what he's doing. The way he spun his body around to score that touchline goal sent chills down my spine. Chills, now, brother. Compared to Shido's goal in episode one. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is kind of cool, right? Like, for sure, the close-up zoom with the pink eye, yeah, that's cool. But what the fuck is happening with the goal? What is that? Can anyone tell me what he did? No, like it looks like a fucking donkey kick mid-air. It looks like he, I guess he hit it with the heel, right? But because it's so choppy, because we don't actually get to see the fluid fucking motion, all we see is this one last frame, and I'm like, uh, I think he jumped mid-air, hit it with the heel, and it's in the net. Can anyone tell me what he did? 
I mean, I think I get the gist of it. He kicked it behind him like a scorpion. But we yeah. don't get any of the prep time for that. Any of the extra movement mm -hmm. leading up to the goal. We don't even see Shido running to the ball. It was just a shot of his foot pivoting. Of yep. course, I can visualize how he does it. But doing that removes the impact of, wow, that was a difficult maneuver to pull off. Like, they just straight out. And this makes sense for the manga, but like they genuinely, right? This is the foot movement, like like uh, the eyes lighting up, like it's so fucking bad. It is actually this is actually a different shot. Actually, this is not the scorpion kick, but it is just so bad when you can see what's actually happening through the manga more than the anime. Like this makes sense. This sequence of events actually makes sense. How he pivoted, he got a pass, chemical reaction happening. He's using his hand to pivot with his foot, and he hit a shot that is spiraling right and then corners in. Great. But, like, in the anime, I can't fucking tell for shit. Because there was no maneuver to begin with. Shido is one of, if not the most eccentric character on this I show. love him. Remember when he almost decapitated Isagi's head in the last episode of season one? But oh, I forgot he did that. Honestly, Shido has been relatively chill in terms of how he interacts with other players minus Rin. He recently got shock collared and he started and Rin threw the pit punch first, but like Shido was great and then he just fucking slam dunk the, you know, U20 striker guy. And he's a fucking wild card. I forgot that he tried to fucking kick, you know, he's like his head off. And you know what's even funnier now that I think about it? It's it's that Shido I think replaced the spot for fucking Kurosaki Ichigo, right? I know that Bleach Thousand Year Blood War is happening right now. That's why, you know, Ichigo and Blue Block got benched and, you know, he's, he's doing something else. But this dude, I'm pretty sure, took Mr. Hero out. And it's funny because he ain't even on Blue Block 11. <laughs> he's on U20 team. He fucking took a slot. Then he said, fuck it, I'm gone. Well, he didn't tell God. He got sent, right? So, Mr. Superman, damn, it's even more tragic how he turned out. But his craziness is backed up by the fact that he's a goal-scoring machine, able to score from any position. These last three episodes strip us of that because we can't even see how good of a player he really is. I don't feel threatened that this was- <laughs> Yeah, this guy, dude, he got robbed. Ichigo got fucking robbed and then Shido's gone. The guy who kicked out Kunigami, right now he's just the worst version of Nagi and Baro mixed together. This is how terrible animation destroys a good plot and a pivotal character. Yep. I would be lying if I said that everything about Blue Lock Season 2 is bad and there's nothing redeeming about it because- Um, I think the story is still so hype. That's why, like, episodes like the most recent one is so enjoyable, even though there's shit animation. But there's nothing really to be animated, right? It's just the dialogue scenes. There were some fight scenes, but even those were just so bad. But it's, like, it's weird where I'm still having so much fun watching it. And a lot of fun also comes from the fact that we're laughing at the shit animation. But in terms of, like, respecting the show and having, like, people actually care about it and have these characters be like an impact it, it takes it away the shitty animation really takes that away because that's not the case i already mentioned it before but the drawings and line art are super high quality yeah they're that, great but the voice acting is amazing that's right soundtrack voice acting right uh, pretty much in terms of production value everything is good except the animation and probably the direction of the show maybe i don't know the pacing is when i say direction it's Actually, I don't even know what I mean by direction. But I definitely think that animation is bad. But production value in terms of soundtrack, voice acting, the overall art, they're so fucking good. The scene where Chigiri asserts himself in the team is already a pretty hype scene in general. But adding the voiceover just made it even better. You can hear it in their voice that they're giving it their all. The yep. music is also not bad. I like they're this great. part where Ego is in his office and the vibey BGM starts playing. It complements his character nicely. And yeah. this scene where Shiro scores his scorpion goal, the soundtrack in that was also very hype. Now that I think about it, everything aside from the animation mm -hmm. is done reasonably well exactly. and with actual effort. It's just too bad that that's the first thing everyone will notice and is the biggest letdown of the season so far. I wanted to get to the bottom of why it looks so bad, and a lot of people on Reddit chalked it off to poor scheduling. There's
It is, right? We know why it's bad. It's because the production committee got so fucking greedy. They're trying to milk as many enemies as possible. Rather than taking their time focusing on one project at a time, they pumped out way too many compared to, let's say, 2022 when Blue Lock Season 1 was airing. So obviously it makes sense that there is lack of budget, lack of resources, and corporate greed just all aligning together to create this shit anime. There's no question that the animation team working behind this is capable of making a good product. We can see that clearly from the character designs and the effects and their sprinkles of quality every now and again. So mm -hmm. the only logical explanation would be that they were overworked and had a tight deadline. Yeah. Largely because they released the Nagi movie just six months before the release of season two. Here's my opinion. The Nagi movie was a massive waste of time and- <laughs> Yeah, I hear it was fucking mid. Whenever you have a movie happening and then another fucking anime like season happening, you should kind of be worried. That's like a bad sign when a studio is taking way too much work. It's not a good thing at all. Resources. I get that Nagi and Rayo have a very close relationship, and their split in season one came as a shock to everyone, including myself. But they were never the focus of this series. Yeah, honest, as an anime only, who gives a fuck about Rayo? Nagi's cool, but it turns out a lot of manga readers say. Rayo is actually a very, very popular character for the source material re enjoyers. So in order to, like, I guess, target that audience, maybe, they focused on this movie. I don't know about you. I did not care about Nagi and Rayo fighting because they didn't give me any time to care. Their introduction to the series came in the Team V versus Team Z match. And immediately after that, they split up. So yeah. the only time... I, I don't care about Rayo. I don't take him seriously. And if you think that... I'm like wrong for this. You're delusional. As an anime only, watching the anime episodes, you're gonna tell me that Rayo is your fucking like most potential hype character? This guy is fucking doo doo water. Now he's showing more like potential with the whole chameleon thing. He's the prince of all like all jack of all trades and he's copying everybody. Sure, now something is starting to build up, but everything so far has not told me that this character is significant. In fact, I expect him to just be washed as soon as season one was over. The time I got to know their friendship was during that match. And then you release a movie one year later being like, oh, well, here's more backstory about them. I don't care anymore. We Again, it's probably because the source material, Rayo in the future, is so much better, so much hype. And in order to kind of sell that to the audience, I think maybe that's why I pick up the movie. We already finished the second selection. It's not like Nagi or Rayo were eliminated. They're still there. So none of their backstories matter to the current arc. I think if we're talking spin-offs, we should compare this to Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, oh, where it's also about a character- Peak, peak movie! ...we never really knew about, Yuta. That movie was good because it gave me time to get to know Yuta first. So yeah. that when he got introduced at the end of episode 2, I was like, oh shit, what happened to him? Yeah, and then it's like he's against us? What the hell? Y'all are hyping up saying true main character, true main character showed up, and now he's like, I'm a hunt down Yuji. What? Come on, man. This drastic tonal shift in season 2 actually makes me want to know what happens next. For me, this is where Blue Lock messed up. You either give us the Nagi Rayo backstory earlier, which is... God, that hand positioning is so gay. <laughs> Come on, just fucking lock pinkies. Honestly impossible. Or you just don't make the movie altogether because it has nothing to do with season two. And I'm not so convinced that if they didn't do the movie, and again, let, let, let's look at this shit, right? It's really, it's really simple. We'll just go to any chart. And let's go to, uh, Blue Lock, alright? Where is Blue Lock right now? Blue. Blue Lock Season 2, 8-Bit Studios, right? Just click onto 8-Bit Studios and look at the amount of projects that they've taken on this fucking year. They ruined Mahoka. Tensor was a mid-adaptation. They're ruining- they, they basically made a shit fucking movie. And the anime is mid. Then you have a bunch of random fucking bullshit that you picked up too. Compare that to 2022. Can you tell the difference? Can you tell the difference in quality and why this exists? It's very, very obvious to me what is happening. Something fundamentally changed here. A third of the movie was also just reusing footage from season one, so they didn't even work on the full 90 minutes. Greedy Honestly, motherfuckers. The I heard they were gonna make a Nagi movie, my immediate thought was, oh, 
This is a cash grab. They're capitalizing yep. on the fact that Blue Lock is popular to make extra yep. cash. And for yep. the most part, it worked. I liked the movie. That's why I posted this on my community page. <sighs> and us as the consumers, right? We just keep eating it up. We need to fucking boycott or some shit. No, I think that um, a lot of people actually are confused about like, hey, why are you still covering Blue Lock? Does, aren't you like making videos and like making reactions like just like helping Blue Lock? It doesn't. So here's the thing that you don't understand. If you're actively helping their bottom line by purchasing their Blu-ray DVDs, different merch and different things, yeah, that's going to give them good signals. But when you watch something and criticize and shit on it, create more noise, other people also have the same opinion, then that's so much better than just ignoring it. It's, this is a bit different from like, let's say, playing a video game, right? Let's say there's like a really shitty video game and the best thing you can do is to just not buy the game and ignore it, hurt their fucking bottom line, right? But anime is a bit different. This is kind of like, it's, you know, it's quote unquote free if you fucking know how to do this shit, right? So it, it, it's, it's a bit different with this page. This post is so ugh, I guess you are my little pog champ coded. But if it's choosing between episode Nagi and having actual animation for season two, I drop Nagi on his head a million times over. It's the most useless product they invested their resources into. Especially since we know now that it impacts the quality of season two. So yeah, if again, if the assumption, and I don't think the notion is true because there's more projects than just episode Nagi. Right, that's that's why 8-Bit Studio is fucking up. Let's say, you know, the movie is the reason why season 2 is doing bad. Then for sure, the movie should have never happened. And you should have focused everything on the blue lock. But again, mid, bad, what the fuck is this? Probably they're all shit too. In term, not the story, but I'm, I'm telling you in terms of like how they adapted it. Like, they're doing too much. So where does this leave me? Well, I think I'm gonna hold off on watching the anime. If there's one good thing that I got from watching season two is that it made me feel extra motivated to read the manga again. If you don't know, the Blue Lock manga is 50 times better than what we're getting now in the anime. Holy shit, what is this art, man? This is crazy uh, uh, imagery. For some reason, Despite both mediums using still frames, the manga is able to capture the movement of the players and the ball so much better than the anime. I the manga is better animated than the anime. I highly, highly recommend that you ditch the anime now while you can and go straight for the manga. Because in the end, I hope to every god they're saving money for the U20 match. <laughs> please, please, please. And if you saw the trailer, it doesn't really look like they saved the budget for the U20 match. But hey, again, the, the newest cope is, guys, just wait for the last five minutes of the U20, right? If there's something crazy that's going to happen, they're going to save all the budget just for the last end of the U20 arc. That's our next level cope right now. Please, 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 please. I just want my blue lock back, man. <sighs> we are coping, man. Is that it? All right, that's the video. Please go give Karu a like on the video. Here's the link. And you guys already know my mindset on this. I think that, again, like it's very obvious what's happening with 8 Studios, the amount of projects they picked up, the lack of resources and, you know, just infrastructure to kind of keep up good polished products, the production committee from Bandai Namco and 8 Studios, right? The shitty decision makers who don't care about art, that only cares about feeding their pocket while Blue Lock is trending and kind of hot, right? That's all they're doing. They have no respect for the show. They're fucking vultures that's going in. And the animators, that's the worst part. There's so many retards that are blaming the animators. They have no understanding of how this shit works behind the scenes. The animators themselves are actually making the animations happen, which gets filtered out at the final process of, you know, finalizing the episodes. And it's just so sad. It's just so sad to see corporate greed get in the way of art. This conflict of interest of trying to make as much money as possible and trying to give the best quality product possible. It's just not possible. Unless you're Studio Mappa and you don't let your, you know, your studio uh, see their family ever. And then what happens? Well, we get pretty much modern day slavery. But hey, Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2 was pretty good, right? So 
that's just a very unfortunate situation happening. I'm still going to watch Blue Lock. We're still going to laugh at the shitty animations. And I think that the more noise that you make, negative opinions, right? Negative sentiments towards Blue Lock, the more that these companies may fucking listen, right? If there's obviously, there, do not buy their fucking Blu-ray DVDs. Do not buy their merch. Don't support them where, where it like affects their wallet, right? But you can definitely make some noise. You can definitely make fun of it. And if enough people are make fucking clowning on this shit, then the top, the fucking decision maker, they're gonna be like, you know what? Maybe we should change something, but that's some hopeful thinking.